John, we toss around this number that the universe is 73 point something percent of dark energy. Uh, what does that mean? How do we know that? And what are the implications? Okay. So what it means is what it says on the tin. Um, 70 percent or thereabouts of the energy density is in a form that isn't, it, it's more or less uniform. It's something that can't clump. Okay. And that it has anti-gravity properties, or more prosaically, negative pressure. So the relativistic effects of tension cause it to push rather than and accelerate the universe. So in a sense, you're asking, how do we know that the universe is accelerating? And the short answer is that it's the whole pile of, of lines of evidence um, accumulated of which the kind of capstone was the, the work in 1998-1999 from observing distant supernovae. So, you know, if, if, the, if, if the universe accelerates, then for a given redshift, a given recessional velocity, if, if you like, then the distance to that object will be different. So an accelerating universe, high redshift supernovae are fainter than they would be in a, in a decelerating universe. Um, and that effect was seen. It's a very clean probe, and that's why it got the Nobel Prize in 2011. But a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that was the first time that we'd heard of dark energy. But, you know, that's not remotely credible, because it's such a radical statement. If that was the first piece of evidence, no one would have believed it uh -huh. for a second. But the fact is, the ground had been prepared by a lot of arguments, particularly um, some to do with, with the microwave background. So again, if you change the... Um, acceleration history of the universe, it changes the apparent size of spots, of, of hot and cold spots in the microwave background. And so early on, even before we detected them, we had strong limits that they couldn't be too small. Mm. Okay, and that already pushed you to having a flat universe. And so the moment there was evidence, which was available even by 1990, say from galaxy clustering, whole pile of lines of argument, that the matter density in the universe was, was low, you had no choice. You needed a critical matter density in total to make it flat. Ordinary clumping matter couldn't do it. The only remaining possibility was a cosmological constant. Wait, wait, the dark energy? The dark, the, the, which the we now call the dark energy. And the cosmological constant is how Einstein introduced it in 1917, 100 years ago. It's, yeah. it's his birthday. Yeah. He thought of it as a, a curvature of empty space. Today, we think of it as being synonymous with the energy density of the vacuum. You know, that change of thought was brought about by the Soviet cosmologists, particularly Zeldovich in the 60s. And as we've discussed, you, know, you try and calculate the energy density of the vacuum, you get a surprisingly large number. So one of the ways out of this uh, that people think about is whether actually, instead of just being a fixed number, what we could be looking at is dynamical. So you have energy density of, of homogeneous space that started at extraordinarily high value and is on its way down to zero. And we are just at the kind of end game of this. You know, that would be the explanation of why it's so small. Oh, that's pure speculation. Well, it, but it's a possibility. And, and, and the reason we know it's a possibility is that off the shelf, cosmology already had technology for making this kind of time-dependent cosmological constant because it's what we use for inflation. You know, inflation is an idea, of say, that, uh, an idea of saying that scalar fields, like the Higgs field, although actually a different one, could make the effective cosmological yes. constant very high in the past. Then it fell off and made a phase transition and inflation ended. So really, if, if, if you can see a scalar field can give you a time-dependent energy density like that once, it's natural mm. to think maybe the same trick oh. could work again with a different field at a very, very different energy scale. So it's, it's, it's a great idea. It's certainly worth looking for. So literally thousands of cosmologists around the world are engaged in five to ten year massive scale projects designed to, to look for small changes in time at the effective energy density. But so far, this. So far, there. we know that, as I said, at the 10% level, it's constant. Maybe at the 1% level, it won't be, but, but no. we don't know. There's no good target. You know, the particle physicists were in a much better shape. They knew they had to be the Higgs or something else equally interesting. For us, there could be dark energy dy dynamics, but at such a low level that you know, we won't be able to detect it with this generation. Mm. What's the significance of either detecting it or not? Well, if you detect dynamics, you'll, you'll probably win a Nobel Prize, so that's fine. Um, I mean, obviously, to know that there's dynamics there would be 
would be extremely interesting. Um, but it wouldn't completely dig us out of our hole because any dynamical system, I mean, some, we, we talk about potential energy, right? You say something falls from here to here because it goes from a place of high potential to low potential. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference in potential that matters. The absolute value is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can take the gravitational potential on this table, add 10 bazillion, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't change the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. But if I take the, the dynamical system that gives me dark energy and add in that constant, it's introduced a, a big cosmological constant. So you're back with the cosmological constant problem. In short, dark energy is dynamical, it's going down, but why is it going down to apparently zero or as, as near as damn it? You know, we haven't actually solved anything because we've just got to ask, well, why is the, the plateau at zero? We don't know. Okay, so uh, so we, that, that would, that's still a question that we have to answer. Uh, but if, if it does do that, I mean, then the observer effect would be the answer? That, that well, we, we'd, we'd need something like that or some other physical symmetry to say that the asymptotic value is exactly zero. That, that might be a more attractive... It would be more attractive, but, but so far... Nobody the, knows what that symmetry is. And so far it looks almost the opposite. That the, 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 the default is that it is what it is and it's not going to change and it's extremely close to zero but not zero and that's yeah, the biggest exactly. problem in the world. But, but you know, if, if, it, if it changes, that's good news. Yeah, it yeah. tells us there's some other entity in the universe, some new thing for physics to study, but, right. but it won't solve the cosmological constant problem. Hmm.